It's Miss Andrea from the Hickory Corner branch of the Mercer County Library System and welcome to another children's author study. Today's author is Jennifer Richard Jacobson. I'm going to start by telling you how Miss Jacobson made her foray into children's literature. Then I'm going to show you all of the books we have by her in the Mercer County Library System and I'll finish up by turning it over to Miss Jacobson herself so that she can talk to you about her twig and turtle series and we have those right here. So let's get started with some background information about our author. Jennifer Richard Jacobson is the author of many award-winning children's books. She comes from a long line of educators and she herself has taught preschool up through sixth grade. She said she always knew she wanted to be a teacher, but she didn't always know that she would be a writer. She kept a diary since age nine, and she won the Edith Bird Bass Contest as a senior in high school in her hometown of Peterborough, New Hampshire. She attended Leslie College in Cambridge, Massachusetts, where she took a course in children's literature and just fell in love with the genre. She tinkered with writing while teaching and holding administrative positions and getting her master's degree from Harvard Graduate School of Education. However, when she moved to Maine and returned to the classroom as a first grade teacher, she became determined to write a children's book. She had her students writing up a storm that year, teaching them everything she knew about writing. And in return, her first grade students helped her become a better writer herself. She wrote a children's novel that year and she considered it practice. It was never published, but it kept her on the path to becoming an author. When her daughter was born, she decided to try her hand at a writing career. She wrote articles, books for parents and teachers, teacher's guides and emergent readers for first grade reading programs, anything that would give her time and space to continue trying to break into the children's literature field. According to Ms. Jacobson, no writing is ever wasted. Freelance jobs taught her the craft and cadence of writing life. She learned that the most important thing about writing is you must sit down and write. That's her biggest piece of advice. So there was one job in particular that she credits for giving her the understanding she needed to finally sell a children's book. As the mother of two young children at the time, she accepted the challenge of reading and reviewing 400 picture books for an educational company. Her kids thought she was the greatest. She stayed in her pajamas and read to them all day long. By reading all those wonderful new picture books, she was able to recognize the pattern of story, the power of voice, and the tone of modern literature. And soon after that job ended, she went on to a writing retreat where she wrote her first saleable book, A Net of Stars. She now has over a dozen books for children, including a new book coming out this fall called Crashing in Love. Ms. Jacobson still lives in Maine with her husband and her dog, and when she's not writing, she provides training for writer's workshops for teachers. Now, let's take a look at all of Ms. Jacobson's books that we have available in the Mercer County Library System. Let's start with this one. This is her picture book from 2019. It's called This Is My Room, No Tigers Allowed. This is Jojo's room. She is not going back to sharing it with her sister, Margaret. It's just that there's a lion in here and a bear and a tiger, and they seem to think it's their room. Can Jojo find a way to show this trespassing trio just who's boss in her room? You'll have to read it to find out. Okay, so then let's move on to her series for early readers. It's called the Andy Shane series, and we have them here in our juvenile section, and they're really early chapter books. And so here's Andy Shane and Dolores Starbuckle. Andy Shane doesn't like school in particular. He doesn't like Dolores Starbuckle, the class know-it-all who bosses him around every day. Hmm. So these books are all about the dynamic between these two characters who are kind of like um, frenemies, if you know that word, right? Next, we're going to move on to her middle grade fiction. So they're much bigger books for older readers. And this one is called Paper Things. When Aerie's mother died four years ago, she made Aerie promise that she and her older brother Gage would stay together always. So when Gage decides he can no longer live with their bossy guardian, Jana, Aerie knows she has to go with him, even though they don't have an apartment yet. Instead, Gage and Aerie couch surf, crashing with friends or sneaking into shelters to escape the cold Maine nights. 
In all this chaos, there is one thing that gives Aerie comfort, her paper things. She knows she's too old to play with the paper people she's cut out of magazines over the years, but it's nice to pretend to have a big family and a room all her own. Of course, it would be better if she didn't have to pretend. Next, we have Small as an Elephant. When 11-year-old Jack Martell crawls out of his pup tent on the first morning of his camping trip with his mom in Acadian National Park, he notices right away that something isn't right. Where's his mom's tent? And the rental car? And where's his mom? Any other kid might panic, might even go to the police. But Jack isn't like other kids, and his mom isn't like other moms. Jack knows that it's up to him to find his mom before someone figures out what's happened and separates them forever. But finding his mom in the state of Maine isn't the same as finding her in their neighborhood back in Boston. With nothing but a small plastic elephant to keep him company, Jack begins his search, starting with all the places they plan to visit together. But as the search drags on, a dark thought plagues him. Once he finds his mom, will he ever be able to forgive her? The next one is called The Dollar Kids. 12-year-old Lowen, a budding comic book artist, is still reeling from the shooting death of his best friend Abe when he stumbles across an article about a former mill town giving away homes for just one dollar. It seems like not only the perfect escape from Flintlock and all the awful memories associated with the city, but also an opportunity for his mom to own their own business. Fortunately, his parents and eventually his brother and sister are willing to give it a try. But is the dollar program too good to be true? You'll have to read to find out. The last uh, series of books I want to show you is Miss Jacobson's newest project, and it is the Twig and Turtle series. So we've got all three of the books in the series, and instead of me telling you about Twig and Turtle, I'm going to turn it over to Miss Jacobson, and she's going to tell you about the series, and she is going to read a chapter from the newest one called Quiet, please. Hi, I'm Jennifer Richard Jacobson. And I am the author of the series, the Twig and Turtle series. Do you like tiny things? I love them. Here is a tiny little box from the doll house that my grandfather built. Inside, I keep a tiny little elephant. As I mentioned, I like small things. I also love pretend play. And there is so much of both in this series. Whoops. In this series. This is Twig and Turtle, and they live together with their family in a tiny house. I'll show you a picture of the inside of the tiny house. Here is Turtle dancing with her dad. She's doing the, the flamingo dance. And there's Twig up in the loft that she shares with Turtle. There's another loft in this house where mom and dad sleep. The first book in the series is Twig and Turtle, Big Move to a Tiny House. The second book is Twig and Turtle, Toy Store Trouble. There are a lot of toys in this book, a lot of pretend play. And the third book, which I'm going to read to you a little bit to you today, is Twig and Turtle, Quiet, Please. Don't you love this cover? The turtle blowing that bubble. I'll begin. Twig and Turtle, Quiet, Please, illustrated by Paula Franco. Chapter one, Let's see if I can let you see the cover while I read the book. Smack, I look up from my book for the umpteenth time. Turtle, can't you go somewhere else and do that, I ask. I'm sitting on the couch and she's right beside me, chomping on a giant wad of gum and practicing blowing bubbles. I can't, she says. Mom won't let me chew gum in the loft. True, the last time Turtle chewed gum in our loft, it stuck our sleeping bags together. Then at least sit on a stool, I say. Here's a picture. 
F Turtle sitting on the stool and looks what happened to her bubblegum. The stools are not much farther away from me. My family lives in a tiny house, which basically means one big room with two lofts overhead. The only room in the house that has a door is the bathroom. Turtle gets up and takes the five steps to the stools. She slides up on one and resumes her practicing. Smack! It's so annoying. All mouth noises are annoying. The only time I can stand mouth noises is when I'm eating, too. Then I don't notice them. Bam! That's Dad jumping down from my parents' loft. I have to lose weight, he says as he slides next to me on the couch. I have to keep reading, I tell him. What are you reading now, he asks, probably just to get me riled. I place my finger on the page so I won't lose my place and show him the cover. Mystery of the Haunted Barn. That looks scary, he says. Is it? Not really, I tell him. But this series is easy to read so I can keep up my stamina. Our school is having a readathon. The class that reads the most hours gets to go bowling right in the middle of the day. And my class is counting on me. As my friend David said, Twig McKay, that's me, is the most voracious reader I know. I suppose that might be true. I do gobble up books. How many hours have you read, Turtle asks, pulling the gum mass out of her mouth and leaving it on the counter. Seventy-three, I say, and there's only one week left. I turn back to the story. I'm reading about some kids who hear a ghost going, Ooh. Why do ghosts always make that sound in books? Ghosts can talk, right? Why don't they say something like, I'm warning you to leave now, or I'll grab you with my ghostly fingers. That would be so much scarier. Dad reaches for the TV remote. Turtle immediately jumps down and says, Let's do Dance Like a Flamingo. Not now, I say. I'm trying to read. You can go up to the loft, Turtle says. Dad looks at me. I'd move the TV if I could. But I can still hear you. You can wear the headphones up there, Dad says, reaching for our only pair. But I can still feel the jumping. The whole house wobbles. It's not easy to concentrate when you're bouncing. Go to the studio, Turtle says. My parents have a studio next door in the back of Sudsy's laundromat. Mom is there now. She's a photographer, and even though it's Sunday, she has a deadline. That means she has to send some very artsy photos by the end of the day. When mom or dad have deadlines, no one else is allowed in the studio. I remind Turtle of that, and the fact that it's too cold to sit in one place outside or in the car and read. Can't you guys dance later, I ask. But you're always reading, Turtle says. I guess she's right. Normally, I read a lot. This past week, I've been reading every single minute I can get. I huff and get up from my seat. I grab a pillow and take it with me into the bathroom. At least I can get some peace and quiet in there. I'll probably still feel the bouncing, but I won't worry that it will cause me to come crashing down seven feet. I pull the pocket door shut and look for a place to sit. It's not easy. My friend Angela's house has three bathrooms and they're ginormous. In her parents' bathroom, there's a tub and a shower, and they're separate from one another. I could lie down in the middle of her guest bathroom with my arms and legs flapping like a snow angel and not touch anything. Our bathroom is tiny, just like the rest of the house. I can sit on the toilet and brush my teeth over the sink. We have a combination tub and shower, but the tub isn't normal size. It's square, and I need to pull my knees into my chest to take a bath. But it might work for reading. Here's a picture of her in her tiny little bathtub. It is small, isn't it?
I place the pillow at one end, step into the tub, and pull the curtain shut to make a cool reading for it. Then I place my feet up the opposite wall. I can still hear faint music, but it's sort of like reading at the beach, where you can hear noise, but it doesn't interrupt your reading. Back to the story. Ooh. Diego and Amira race into the old barn and slide the door shut. The ghostly sound follows them. It gets louder and louder. I stop reading. I hear a sound. It's coming closer. Is it a ghost? A hand reaches behind the curtain and turns on the shower. Ah! Mama yell, what are you doing? Twig gets pretty wet in that shower and her mom mistakenly turns it on. So does her library book. I hope you've enjoyed this chapter and that you'll enjoy all of the books in the Twig and Turtle series. Thanks for listening. If you would like to practice your writing skills so you can become an author too, you can try some of Jennifer Richard Jacobson's One Minute Writing Tips, which can be found on her website. Thank you to Jennifer Richard Jacobson for participating in this video. And if you would like to place any of her books on hold, you can visit our website at www.mcl.org or go to the My MCLS NJ app.